Governor Christie is off the presidential campaign trail back in New Jersey, and he's recently delivered his 2017 fiscal budget address. As a former governor, Governor Kane, how did he do? I think he did pretty well. I mean, he laid out all the problems. Uh, he had solutions for a number of them. Uh, we have a little more money in the budget because the economy's come back, and that gave him a little room. And it was not really confrontational. And in the major problems, he said, look, I'm open. Let's work together. And he said that a number of times. So I, I think this is a governor who wants to work with the legislature, and I think the budget address did what a budget address should do. And there are major problems from the Transportation Trust Fund to affordable housing. Yeah. What should he tackle first and second and on and on and on? Well, I'd, I'd pick up the easy stuff. I think the Transportation Trust Fund is a fairly easy question. <laughs> I don't know. We haven't addressed it in a long time, but gas tax is something that most people in the state are now coming to accept uh, as part of the solution. If you add some benefit to New Jersey, such as reforming the inheritance tax to keep more people in the state at the same time, then I see that starting to come together as a solution. It's something both parties can buy and something we can get done. Uh, it takes some ne negotiation between the parties, but I think the, the solution is there. It's the lowering the inheritance tax has been sponsored by one of, um, one of the Democratic senators. But given the Democratic legislative leadership and what they're calling for, and also the backdrop of a gubernatorial election next year, an election that in many ways in New Jersey has already started. Where do you start first as a governor to deal with these issues? You start with the Transportation Trust Fund. One is the Democratic Party, if you talk about Democrats, cannot afford not to have that solved. Their backbone is organized labor. It's not only because you don't want the state infrastructure to lag. You don't want all those unemployed people sitting in the union halls. And so it's, it's the Democrats have a real reason to get to that one first. And I think the governor would like to get it out of the way, too. So that's, I think that's number one. And I think, I think in, you sit down together, those three, in a room for a couple hours, and I, I think you're going to come out with a solution. Do you think the governor has an advantage, given the fact that the Democrats want to put a constitutional amendment on the November ballot calling for huge investments in the pension system without any cuts? Can the governor, do you think, effectively take this message directly to the people that, as he says, that's going to require cuts in government and tax increases? Well, the Democrats would be very foolish if they go ahead with that plan because I've had a lot of, a lot of time campaigning for constitutional amendments. Everybody's pretty well going to be for them before they pass. Most people are going to be against this one. I would campaign against it. The governor's going to be out there campaigning against it. Chamber of Commerce, everybody, so many people are going to be against it that it's going to go down. Now, the Democrats lose all the advantage at that point. If you have something for the pensions on the ballot and the people knock it down, then the Democrats have lost all the advantage, and they start from zero. So I don't think they want that. And much better to get some kind of deal made out with the, with the governor and the legislature and, and getting it done. It's, it's just that constitutional amendment was a stupid idea to begin with, and it's a dangerous idea, I think, for the Democrats. It's said that leadership requires listening skills. Is the governor that kind of leader? He listens. <laughs> he'll tell you when he doesn't agree, but he listens. He, and he's also a very quick learner. I mean, he'll, um, my experience, just not negotiating with him, but talking with him, is that he not only remembers what you say, he remembers what you say two or three years later. <laughs> he'll, co he'll quote it back at you. So he's, he does listen. He does listen, and he learns. And he said something during that speech. He said, you know, I'll be a better governor because I've been through this presidential campaign. That may be true. He may have learned a lot. And he may put some of that learning to, to, in, in place for these negotiations. Governor Kane, thank you very much for sharing okay. your views. Thank you, Ken.